been here with Arn Chorn Pond and Patricia McCormick. McCormick. They have written a book together, and <laughs> it's a very beautiful book about Arn's life in Cambodia as a child. The book is called Never Fall Down. And uh, Patricia wrote this book as a novel, but yet we're very fortunate at this moment to have the person, Arn, who inspired the novel. So may I ask first, Patricia, what is it in your heart and mind that took you on this adventure with Arn's life? Well, you know, as an American, I am ashamed to tell you that I did not know a lot about Cambodian history. I knew a little bit about the history of the Khmer Rouge. But when I met Arn, there was this outpouring of his story. He told it with so much fire and so much urgency that I thought that it needed to be captured between the covers of a book and brought to American readers, in particular to young adult American readers who don't know that history. And to see how there is at least one individual, but this individual in particular, who was so brave and so kind and so decent that he survived. And I think it's an inspiring story. Arne, um, what is it that has allowed you to triumph? And I love that word, triumph. To triumph from this terrible terror and abuse? I don't know to tell you the truth. I think uh, I wonder every day about, uh, wonder every day in my life about why my dad told me, my, Peter Pan, my adopted father said, well, you're the chosen one. Uh, I told him I have some problem with that because uh, many of my brothers and sisters and thousands of other kids couldn't survive, they were slaughtered starve slowly to death and uh, why should I be a special one to, to be chosen and to survive it all. Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, some skill in surviving the Khmer Rouge, almost impossible to survive in a country with, you know, you should say hell beyond words. Uh, you couldn't possibly survive there. Um, and. There are many, many uh, other kids that I uh, have special, you know, I, I knew that they had sp special ability and couldn't survive also. So maybe luck, some luck, maybe skill, maybe, uh, I don't know, some good thing I have done that uh, I just found out from this book also. She was brave meeting former Khmer Rouge soldiers who knew that a little 12, 11 year old boy, Arn, who uh, did something that I blocked out of my, my life, something that cost my life, to steal food for some other children, to do good thing in the midst of that. That may be how I survived, that may be how that Khmer Rouge leader, uh, he, he was observed, uh, he observed what I did and he probably wanted to change his life to do good too. So uh, that's maybe part of how I survived too. So, uh, what do you think, Patricia? Mm. I think that all of what Arne just said is true, that it was partly skill. He had been uh, kind of a street kid before the Khmer Rouge, so had a certain savvy about how to read the landscape and how to get by. But I think what happened in the killing fields went far beyond that. Partly it was your innocence, I think, that allowed you to survive, too. And I think imagination. I believe that you could imagine a better future for yourself, and that is why you did not quit. That and music, of course. The ability to play music, or the willingness at least to put your hand up and say, I'll try it, uh, to, to play for the Khmer Rouge, that saved your life. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about the cultural revival in Cambodia. Yes, um, she said it about music. 
that's one of the things I probably survived, and thanks to music. And when I went back uh, to Cambodia a few times back to try to f just feel the country, and I didn't want to face my past at all because it's a lot of, uh, you know, I still have nightmares and stuff going back. But I must, I must do it in one way or another, you know, during my lifetime to face the past and to go on maybe and heal. And then, uh, you know, I found my second master, Mr. Mech, who was not killed by the Khmer Rouge. And uh, I came back to, and he asked me what, you must have something for me to do, like what you did in the in Pol Pot time. We have to take care of each other and help each other to, to survive that. And uh, uh, right now, for example, we have a Cambodian Living Arts, that the organization I co-founded, uh, I founded in, in 1998, uh, where, uh, you know, matching of finding ma masters that only 10% survived the Holocaust uh, to, you know, survive this killing field, to match them with the younger generation to continue that lineage. Because in Cambodia, the the, the songs and the tradition, traditional musics, and were not written down, so we are uh, we are in a deep uh, trouble. Um, so. When they are, when we are matching, matching the, the, the master that I survived, these household names, you know, and still in obscure and and still confused about the Khmer Rouge killing, and they don't want to come forward to share their story. That's another thing. When I met them and I asked about them, they start sharing story. Unless they trust you, they will share with you. If they don't trust you, they won't. So the same thing with the art, and the, I see the young, the young student, they don't want to connect themselves. They, or they want, but they don't know how. So they, they turn into a pop, you know, Korean pop or Chinese pop or whatever, American pop. But then when you connect uh, the, the uh, music, uh, they start talking, you know, they start talking and we just, I have to build a platform for them to be meeting each other and something will happen. So right now we have a group of students now, some masters died in our project, but uh, the students are taking the torch and they are, we have groups now going out to even the countryside with me. I perform with them and uh, we're planning a magic music bus to go out into the countryside to perform for free for those who will not, uh, will die with no live music in their lives. So the former Khmer Rouge and their children. So. I'm committing my life to do that uh, to uh, to the former uh, Khmer Rouge soldiers' families. Uh, maybe just to perform, not to tell them, you know, you miss one, you didn't kill one, you miss one. Now I'm coming back, and your children will be singing and you'll be playing music. Is that fun? That's what in how I get back. Can I add to that for a second? Please, the other thing that absolutely. you know Arne has taught me in terms of that vacuum that I had about Cambodian history is the way that our country, the United States, bombed Cambodia so frequently that we called it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And Arne's view now is that he's going to bomb America with musicians and artists and dancers and bring all these uh, artists to Lincoln Center, to the Brooklyn Academy of Music, Joy Theater. the Joyce Theater, for something called Season of Cambodia, so that his country won't be known as the home of the killing fields, but will be known now as the home of these really vibrant arts. Some are ancient, some are new. And that's how I get back to both my country yes. here, Americans, and the Khmer Rouge and the countryside still rooming the, Khmer, uh, the countryside, so both way. Yes, very beautiful personal and political, personal political healing. Uh, thank you so much. And I just wanted to mention that uh, Patricia and Oren's book has been nominated for a National Book Award. Would you like to say a few words about that? Well, you know, it's really uh, exciting. But it's very important for a book like this because there are cautious readers who are never going to pick up a book like this unless it gets that seal of approval. And I think the other thing that's so powerful about it is that the National Book Award recognizes by this nomination the power of storytelling, the power of storytelling to heal and to make connections among people. Never Fall Down, the story of Arnshorn Pond, written by Patricia McCormick. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Thanks.